Hey everyone, back again. I hope that you are as ready to relax and restore as I am. I know that I really need it today. If you're keeping with me, we just hit it hard with core crazy and um, now we're switching gears, kind of going to the other end of the spectrum with a really nice gentle yoga class. So I think that even though this is under the category of a yoga class, um, I like to just think of it as self-care because the aim isn't really like flexibility or strength. It's really more about having a good internal experience that's gonna help you go about your external life when the session is over. And today in particular, I am going to be going over a couple new breathing techniques that um, if you've been with me in studio at Ivy Tech before, we have done these. It's been a really long time, so they might feel new to you or just be new altogether. So yoga is about movement, but no matter what type of yoga that you're doing, breath is always at the center of the practice. That's kind of the idea behind things. So really, even if you're just practicing mindfulness with breath, some people might argue that that's a form of yoga. So um, that's what we'll be focusing on today. Not so much strengthening. It's not about a performance. It's not about what you look like. It's not about aesthetics. It's about the way that it feels. If you're practicing at home, nobody's watching you. This is your time to just you know, be as you are without any judgment. So um, I just invite you to take that approach as we just breathe and stretch together today. Have that unique intention that helps you, but also just keeping in mind to breathe into the tightness, breathe into the stress rather than resisting it. Breathe into it, face it, and then breathe it out. So I know that sounds kind of Woo woo, I try to not be too much that way. But um, just for the next 45 minutes, just just give it a try. Try to have, you don't have to analyze whatever you're stressing about. Just think of breathing into it, acknowledge where you feel tightness in your body, and then breathe out, give it permission to leave the body. Oh, thanks for all the love, Ricky. My husband's my, my number one fan on here, it seems. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can get started on time. We will just be beginning in a nice, easy seat on our mat. I've got a yoga blanket handy that I'm sitting on. You don't have to have that. Um, you can just simply sit, use some blocks, anything that helps you to feel more supportive. All right, so let's go ahead and make our way over to the mat. And if you do see the camera start to shake, I do have Mabel up there wrapped around the, the tripod, so that's what that is. So any comfortable, just like easy, seated position here, go ahead and close those eyes, settle on in. If your hips become tight at any point, you can always lengthen them out, lengthen them out long. Um, I don't have my blocks handy with me today, but you know, use them for support or in any way that helps to like bolster you or have you feel a little more ease. It's all about the path of least resistance today. So settling in, closing our eyes, just to take a little bit of time to shift away from the world, to shift away from whatever's going on in the day and just bringing our awareness fully to our breathing without any judgment. Maybe take a second or two to just acknowledge where that breath is coming from. Do you feel tightness in your chest? Do you feel the chest moving up and down as you breathe out? If so, let's try to be a little more expansive and breathe into the diaphragm as you inhale. Think of pressing your navel away from your body, away from your spine. And as you breathe out, of that opposite motion of the air pressing out by drawing your navel back towards your spine. We 
don't have to force this process. We're just gonna let it start to develop naturally as we gently begin increasing the capacity of our inhale. Making an effort to breathe out just a little bit deeper, empty out the old, make space for the new. And as you keep that process moving, start to just sit up a little taller. Let those shoulders relax away from the ears, just feel nice and rooted in the base of your spine. Continue to shift more and more into your awareness. Start to hone in on a theme or an intention today. If that's simply focusing on your breath, that's beautiful. Maybe you start there. If we want to get a little more specific, maybe you pick a word, a prayer, a quote, or a mantra that brings you some peace, joy, relaxation. Maybe you're more visual. Maybe it's an image, the beach, the forest, someone you love, anything at all. There's no right or wrong or rules. You're going to make it your own. As you allow that to be an anchor or a cue to bring you back to your mat, back to your breath, we're going to go for three more rounds of breath here in stillness with our eyes closed. out that third round of breath just open those eyes to a soft gaze straight ahead we're gonna go over a couple breathing techniques before we come into some movement so right off the bat we'll come into three cleansing breaths so if you've never done a cleansing breath before it's very simple and it feels like such a relief all it means is that we're gonna take a really deep inhale through our nose we're gonna think of our belly expanding inflating and then on the exhale we're just gonna let out a nice <sighs> through the mouth think of just like letting out a big Sigh, breathing out all that stress. So let's do three of those all together. Go ahead and inhale. Exhale. Two more. Last one. All right. Next, we're going to go over something called alternate nostril breathing. So just like it says, it's going to focus on breathing in and out through one nostril at a time. If you have any like restrictions, like asthma or anything when it comes to breath and this doesn't feel good, just skip it, breathe normally, listen to your body. But what's so neat about alternate nostril breathing is that it has an effect on our brain. So it has to do with the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere of the brain. And I've, um, I'm a big psychology person, so to me this is really fascinating. But when we can switch which nostril we're breathing in and out of, we're like crossing that barrier and like bringing both of those hemispheres back to balance. Cause sometimes, you know, we've got the right side of the brain and the left side of the brain, kind of the more creative, the more analytical or logical. We're gonna think of balancing that out. So with that being said, go ahead and make an L with your right hand or your left hand if maybe you use your left hand. So I'm gonna do like, we call them peace fingers, the pointer and the middle finger and then the thumb here. So that's gonna be what helps to plug each alternate nostril. So start with your thumb plugging the right nostril, or if you're left-handed, you'll start on the left side. So plugging that right nostril, and I'm gonna use my other hand to kind of cue you, know that you don't have to worry about that. We're gonna breathe in through the left nostril, so take an inhale. At the top of your inhale, use your peace fingers to plug the left nostril, let the right nostril go, and then exhale through the right. Stay here, inhale through the right, switch off, release the left, exhale through the left. So just like that, breathing in. Switch off, breathe out through the alternate nostril. Breathe in through that same nostril. Switch off, breathe out through the left. So for about the next three to four rounds of breath, let's continue through that at our own pace. If it starts to feel restricted, just let go and breathe normally. more rounds. So 
So let's go for one more. All right, nice. So for me, I don't know about you, but that like helps to take my anxiety down a notch like right off the bat. So that is a great tool that even if we're not on our mat, like let's just say that you're having a panic moment or you're just at your desk, at your office, your home office, practicing that mindfulness, try it next time it happens. Take a little bit of time to do some alternate nostril breathing. All right, so let's go ahead and get into some actual physical movement. We're gonna start with some neck rolls, getting some tension out of those areas that we tend to hold a little extra stress in. So hands down to your thighs or knees. Inhale, I just want you to kind of squeeze real tight up through those shoulder blades. Exhale, release, let it go down the back. Two more. Exhale, release. Feel free to breathe out through your mouth here if you like, if that helps you to feel a little more of a release. Exhale, let it go. And let's do three in the opposite direction. You're still gonna inhale, strut real tight. Exhale, release, roll it forward. Two more. Exhale, let go. Last one. Exhale, let that tension melt away. All right, keep your tall spine. Let those hands relax. We're just gonna sit up nice and tall. Let the shoulders reach away from the ears. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, keep the length of your spine. You're just gonna drop the chin to the chest. And then at your own pace, doing a few neck rolls, we're gonna sweep that right ear over the right shoulder. Gentle little pull along that left side of the neck. Exhale, sweep through the middle. Inhale over to the left. So for the next three to four breaths, just move about your own rhythm. If one side is tighter than the other, lean into that, hold a little longer, stay connected to your body, your breath. Keep softness to the skin across your face. Keep softness to your jaw, no clenching between the teeth. Let's finish out with one more breath. Find any evenness that you may need to find. Pausing with the chin down to the chest. Use a little inhale to just lift those eyes back up to neutral. All right, making our way down through the body. We're gonna start to do a little bit of spinal stretching. We're gonna come into the six movements of the spine. I have a yoga pose of the day video that goes over this into a little more detail, but doing spinal work can be a great stress reliever. You can even do this while seated at your desk. So starting with an inhale, let's bring those hands over to the right knee. Kickstand that right arm behind the back, inhale. Lengthen through the crown of your head. This might be enough of a twist for you today. If you wanna go a little deeper, Think of this little left hand as an anchor. Don't grip the knee, be, be kind to it. Just a little winding around. Baby sip of air on that inhale. Nice, full and complete exhale, drawing navel back towards the spine. gentle release unhook the left arm unwind your spine float that right arm over we're over to the left knee kickstand the left arm lengthen little anchor here exhale gentle twist about three breaths here Unhook that right hand, unwind the spine back to the middle. Next, we're gonna come into cat-cow, just from a seat. So hands to the shins or knees, bring those shoulders up, puff up your chest, lift your heart, lift those eyes up towards the sky. Think of opening through any tightness in your chest or heart center, and then exhale, tuck your chin, roll those shoulders forward and around. Think of lengthening, creating more space, down the back of the neck, in between those vertebrae, and at your own pace, we're just gonna inhale and exhale. With the rhythm of our breath, the exhale is the roundedness where you're breathing out, and the inhale is the little gentle back bend, squeeze those shoulder blades. So think of using about one more round 
a breath to find any evenness you need to find here. And just lift yourself back up to neutral. We've got two more movements to go. That's gonna be side to side movement that'll complete our little movement of the spine series. So let's just inhale those arms up and out. Kiss those palms overhead. Exhale, bring the left arm down, palm to the ground or forearm to a block. Bend at the elbow, just reach up and over. I love side bending because they promote energy and relaxation at the same time. And as you exhale, use the help of that left arm and then just sweep that right arm back up. Let's just continue up and over to the right. Breathing into any tightness we maybe have been holding on to in our side bodies. You can think of using this right arm as like a little like perimeter or control for your range of motion here. Keep those sits bones grounding so that you still continue to get a good stretch and then just settle in, breathe. And exhale, lift your body up floating things back down to either side. All right, let's go ahead and switch gears and get things nice and evened out. We've been in that cross-legged position for a while. So we are just gonna come around and meet our bellies here. So just in any way, just bring yourself face down here. Let's start by bending those elbows, stacking the palms on top of one another. And if you want to be nice and easy on your neck, you can even take your forehead to the tops of those palms here. Create a little more space between your feet. Think hip width apart or maybe even slightly wider. Tops of those feet are flat. Just let the, the lower back go. Just release it. If you're clenching or holding on to anything in the spine or in the glutes, make an active effort to soften. And it's gonna be really subtle, but we're gonna do like a little self massage on those hip flexors. You're just gonna do a little hip wiggle to the right and a little hip wiggle to the left. So just a little bit of decompression there on those hip bones. If you need to anchor those toes a little bit like you see me doing to shift, you can always give that a try. If you have any hip or joint issues, just be mindful as you move from side to side. Go ahead and come to stillness. Flatten the tops of those feet here. So bring your head back to neutral, bend those knees. Let's continue to release our low back by windshield wipering out. So the feet are pointing up to the ceiling at first, and then you're just letting them wave from right to left. Be gentle here. Take your time, breathe in and out. Go for one more breath. And bring those legs nice and long. Taps of the feet flat here. We're gonna go ahead and come into our Sphinx pose. So just nice, easy back bend. Again, like I mentioned in the introduction, we're not worried about what the poses look like today. We're more concerned with our internal experience of how things are feeling because the aim of this class is to de-stress. So even if that means like your sphinx pose is here, if that's what feels good to you today, I just encourage you to celebrate that and honor that. Maybe we're here. Maybe we're just lying flat. So no right or wrong. As long as we're breathing in and out and making an effort to stay connected to the breath, that's what matters. So two more breaths. And let's go ahead, shift those elbows out, wrap things back in. Give your spine just a breath or two to settle. And we're gonna shift gears for a counter stretch. So bring your chin to the mat. Bend an elbow on either side. Those thumbs are gonna line up about with the underarms. Exhale, press into your mat. You're gonna lift up and back to a child's pose. 
So just round through the low back. I'm taking the wide knee variation so I can still focus on my breath. So if you're not familiar with that, that's feet together, lots of space between your knees. You're melting down and continuing to come into that diaphragm breathing. So let's really take a pause for four rounds of breath because we are going to come back down to the belly and stretch the front of the body again here. So think of this as a counterbalance, a counter stretch for about three more rounds. Staying in tune here, maybe you take a little check-in to recall that theme, that image. For two more breaths. through our quads. So those are the tops of the thighs here. So start by bending in through your right elbow. Again, your different options. You could like face over to the left. We'll just make sure to balance that out on the other side. You can do your forehead or your chin to the top of that palm. We're going to bring our left arm down to the left. So starting with the left leg, you're going to bend the knee. So make your starting point to be just pointing that foot straight up to the ceiling. And I'm just shifting here to kind of face you so you can hear my directions here on this first round. But if this is a good stretch and a good stopping point, I just want you to stay right here. If you know that you need the deeper stretch in order to get relief, you might just start by bending that foot in closer to your body. We can increase this even more by lifting up. If we find that we can connect, we can use that left hand to help us out. So make sure that we're not straining. All stretch, no strain. Think of relaxing through your hip flexor here. So we're also getting a nice little stretch in those tissues around the knees. So just be mindful if you do have any knee concerns, if this doesn't feel appropriate for your knees, go ahead and release and ease up on that stretch. So let's go two more rounds of breath. Very nice. Start to release the foot if you've got a grip. Gently lengthen that left leg nice and long. All right, we're gonna stay grounded and focusing on the left side as we switch gears over here to the um, upper part of the body. So I'm going to bring my left elbow in, left thumb by the underarm. Take your right arm out to a T. We're gonna bring the right cheek and ear to the mat. So starting on this side, you'll be able to see me a little bit better. So we're going to start to open up through the heart. So I'm rolling over that left arm, even if it's just a hair. If it's too much, just stay flat. This is going to be a nice stretch as well. So if we're pressing here, we might start to stack. So my right arm is lengthened behind me out to my T. Again, we can be anywhere from here to here. There's some people that like to kickstand, that's a little bit much for me, but maybe you stack those hips. So just gentle stretch in that right half of the heart center, in that inner shoulder for about two more breaths. And very gently, we're gonna start to roll flat to the chest here as we prepare to get everything nice and evened up. So go ahead and slide that right elbow back in. We're gonna shift over to the other side of the body, starting again with the quadriceps, the lower body. So switching gears, so unwind, bend your left elbow. Remember, it's forehead or chin resting on the top of that hand or anything that's comfortable. Bring that right arm down by the side, bend the right. So find the range of motion that works for you. If we don't connect, you don't have to keep reaching. Just stay relaxed. If we need to help that foot along to get more relief, we're just going to think of drawing that right foot and ankle in towards the body, breathing. 
gonna go for about three more breaths. Remember, we're breathing into tightness, breathing into tension. We're breathing out the stress. It's leaving our body. It doesn't serve us. We're letting it go for two more. Gently release the hand from the foot if it's there. Lengthen your right leg long. Start to bring that right arm up. So we're switching gears up towards the heart. So take your left arm out to T. Bend your right elbow in. Thumb by the underarm. We're going to face the right. So it's the left cheek and ear that's on the ground. And if you need extra support, I should have mentioned this on the other side, but you can always bring that blanket or towel if like, we don't want to have like this thing going on. So again, props are your friend. If you need that to keep your neck straight, this is a great option. So start to press. So now you can see what it looks like from the other angle. That left arm's out to T. So I'm not overdoing it. I'm just pressing to a range of motion to where I feel a very gentle opening up through my left side of the shoulder, inner part of the chest. Three more breaths. Gently unwinding with control. We're going to go flat back down to the chest and heart. We're going to go ahead and bend that left elbow in as well. Take an inhale, let things settle, and then exhale, pressing up and back. Child's pose. Let's get a nice counter stretch for four breaths. Think of these child's poses along the way as just little check-ins. Remember, child's pose is your safe space. If you just want to chill here at any time, that's totally fine. All right, nice and easy. We're going to briefly lift up table pose just to simply stretch those legs back out one more time. Just bring right leg long, exhale it down, inhale left leg long, exhale it down, and then go ahead and just relax, just settle back to your child's pose. We're going to balance out our shoulders by coming into a little thread the needle variation from child's pose. If it works better to take it from table, you're welcome to do that too. So I'm just backing in a little bit as you can see keep my left arm down strong and proud. I'm going to pick my right arm up and simply thread it underneath. Again, if I need extra support for my neck, that's where I'm going to recruit my blanket or my blocks to make it really nice and relaxing and comfortable here. Yeah, that feels good. So let's give it three breaths. Two more. And be gentle with yourself. Use a strong left arm for support to lift your way back up here, then switch things out. Put that right arm down nice and firm. Pick that left arm up, thread the needle underneath. into a table pose. If you've got like a blanket or towel handy and you need extra support underneath those knees, this is a great way to protect those joints over time. So come to your table, nice flat back, strong arms, fingers spread wide. We're gonna cat cow it out. Inhale, lift the head and heart. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin. Round, two to three more breaths. Move at your rhythm here. 
I'm sitting up through your spine. your flat spine here and then we're going to come into a little low, low lunge series as we build towards a pigeon pose kind of like our pinnacle pose of this lower body part of our series and if you've worked with me before you know that I'm very conservative about pigeon pose especially if we've got any hip issues going on so just if you're not ready for pigeon today you can always move into another round of low lunging or anything else that you might get relief from so let's just start nice and easy Bending here, if you've got blocks handy, blocks are great. So just basic low lunge, the back knees down. That front knee is just bent. If it reaches a little past the ankle or toes because we're in a low lunge, it's no problem. Give it two more breaths. And very gently we're gonna walk things back here if you've got blocks you can walk back with your blocks we're just gonna give that hip a break lengthen out through that right hamstring and switching out let's walk it forward here so this is where it gets fun this is a little hip opening series that's gonna give you the opportunity to kind of move into some unique movements in your own way but step by step, let's move together first. So this right foot's gonna heel toe step, one step out to the right edge of your mat. From there, bring both arms to the inside of your leg. So you wanna make sure toe, knee, and hip are facing the same way. We wanna avoid it turning in like this. We wanna think of the toe, if anything, a little turned out. So this is like a little lizard variation here. And then from there, I'm gonna add on another step. You're gonna take your hands and walk them about one hand's length out to the left side of the mat and from here this is where it becomes organic and just your own unique series you're just going to shift from right to left kind of working into those hip joints so again it doesn't have to be pretty it's more about how it feels we can also add a little bit of twisting maybe you look over your right shoulder over your left shoulder Maybe you lift up and out. So I just want to encourage you to stay connected to your body, your mind connect, body connection here, and practice working into what feels good for you for about three more breaths. You don't have to keep it moving. If you find a spot that you feel like you need to hold an extra round of breath in, you're going to do that instead. And it might be different for each side. We've got sometimes imbalances between the right and left side of the body. So just know that that's normal. Let's go for one more full breath, finishing up. All right, nice and easy. Walk back into your mat. We're gonna heel toe step this right leg back to the middle. Frame that front leg with the arms here. And then lift up and out. Bring your right knee back to table pose. We're gonna inhale, lift that right leg long behind us. Exhale, cross, tuck the toe, squeeze those inner thighs and add a little tilt, meaning left ear is just gonna squeeze around towards that left hip. So think of this as a little counter movement before we tap into that other side. Okay, unwind the head and neck uncross the leg, back to table pose. Same series on the left side. So it should feel really good by the time we're done with both and we should feel more prepared to come into our pigeon. So lunging through that left leg, we start with just the basic lunge. So arms on either side to the floor or to blocks. Back knee down. Feeling length. Down that right quad and hip flexor. Your stretch. Walk your hands or blocks up and back. Be sure to be kind to this knee. Avoid any hyperextension. Let it have give. Let it be as bent as it needs to. Be kind to yourself. And let's inhale. 
inhale, walk it back in. So again, this is where it gets fun. You're gonna heel toe step, the left foot out to the left. So seeing, you can see better on this side how I'm more turned out. I just don't wanna be turned in. That's not really safe for the knee. So if anything, toe pointed slightly out. You've got room now to move that left arm to the inside of the leg. From there, we're gonna walk those hands one step each directly out to the right. So you've created a range of motion in space. So now we can tilt from right to left. We can do our twisting. We can lift up and out of the hip. We can lean down. Make sure that you're moving gently. Give your body time to catch up with your movements here. Hold along the way as needed and send a round of breath into those hips. Take your time. Let's go three more rounds of breath. Remember, there's no judgment. We're not worried about the appearance of the pose. It's all about that therapeutic approach today. Last breath here. Find any evenness. Finish up. All right, step by step, let's come out of this together. So walk those hands back in. Heel toe step, that foot back to the middle. Frame that front leg and then move our way back. Table pose. Arms are strong. Inhale, lift that left leg up. Exhale, cross, squeeze those inner thighs and tilt that right ear just a hair over to the right. Two more breaths. All right, unwinding, uncross. Okay, so little pause. At this point, we are gonna move into our pigeon pose. So remember, if pigeon is just something that you're still working towards because it is a deeper pose, please just come into another round of low lunging or a lizard lunge, or maybe you just do like a seated butterfly or hip stretch. So right off the bat, I'm going to prepare my prop so that I can support my hips. So that could work with a block, or if you've got like a blanket handy like me, you could fold it up into the height or shape that you need. It might take a little bit of trial and error, that's okay. So just having something handy, unless you're pretty open through your hips and really seasoned with pigeon pose, you may already know that you don't need one, that's fine. So let's start with the right side here, keeping things in balance. Draw your right knee up towards your right wrist. So from there, you're gonna walk that left leg and toe back a little bit. You're gonna kick this heel a little bit more out here. We don't wanna force like this shin to be parallel. That's not really an alignment that I adhere to, even though I even could. I just don't think that it's as safe for those joints. So this is where we want to think of keeping the hips square to the front of the mat like headlights. Even if that means that you're not all the way down here, we want to avoid trying to get all the way down here and like going like this, because then we lose our stretch. So we're staying square and we're filling in any space underneath our right hip and glute with a blanket here. So see that I'm elevated, but I'm supported. I'm square to the front, and now I'm supported with my arms. If I've got blocks, I can create a shelf right here, or if I don't need one, I can lower on down to the forearm. So we want it to be a relaxing variation here. We're gonna settle in for about five breaths. If you need to move out of the pose at any time, please listen to your body. breaths, breathing into that tightness, exhale that stress away. All right, step by step, round your palms into the floor, strong arms, walk things back in, start to inch that left knee back in, stay supported, lift up and out, table pose, and then lift the right leg parallel, bring it down. Lift the left leg parallel, bring it down. So that's just our little counter movement in between sides. Take your support and move it over to the left. We're gonna even things out. So draw your left knee to your left wrist. We're gonna inch that right leg back. We're gonna kick that left heel forward a bit. 
and we're going to start to settle into our pigeon pose. So again, we want to stay square. If that means we're starting to go like this, we need to stay lifted and fill in any space. That could be really stacked like so, or maybe you lower that blanket down a level to find what works. We're feeling that stretch in that outer hip glute area. We're feeling a little extra length along down the opposite side, that right hip flexor. We're supported with the arms. We could create that shelf with the block or lower down forearms. So just like the other side, five full breaths. Breathing into tension. Don't think about what it is. Just feel it and then exhale, let it go. to pop up to those palms, strong arms, walk it back in here, start to lift up and out of that hip, you can tuck that back toe behind you to inch back in, bring your left knee back, inhale, lift it parallel, little squeeze, exhale, lower, other side, all right, beautiful job, let's press back, child's pose, start to bring things down, it's all downhill from here, working our way Closer and closer to that relaxation. All right, be gentle with yourself. Lift up. Come around to a seat. We're going to prepare to roll our way down to the backs. If you're working with a blanket or a towel, you could always have it handy for relaxation to like place a blanket roll underneath your neck. You could do it underneath your knees, which goes really nice for the lower spine. So just some different suggestions, ways that you can make things your own. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and place mine underneath my neck today here. So just tuck and roll your way back nice and easy. So make sure it's supportive and that you're not crunching your neck if you're follow it with me. We're just going to inhale. Reach those arms up. Reach those toes away from your palms and fingertips. Acknowledge all this new open space we've created over the course of our practice. Exhale. We're just going to bring those knees into the body. Little squeeze. Take any final rocking right to left that feels good. We're going to finish out with just some gentle circles with the knees in both directions. Once you feel even and settled, go ahead and begin to make your way into a final relaxing pose that works for you. That could just be long legs and arms out at 45 degrees, palms up. It could be bent knees. It could be wide knees and then folding those thighs in towards the center. Start to just let those eyes rest in their sockets, soften the skin across your face. Let go of anything lingering that you might be clenching in the jaw as you just allow that softness to trickle down through your neck, shoulders, arms, and torsos, softening down through your hips, legs and feet. We're going to settle in for about the next two minutes or so as we just give ourselves the gift of hitting pause on the world.
to acknowledge your breath again. If you don't have any more obligations for the rest of the day or for a while, you are welcome to just continue to settle in, let go, moving deeper into your relaxation. For those of us that need to come back, going to begin to breathe a little more deeply, inhaling, exhaling, revisiting that rhythm of our breath. And start to wiggle through toes and fingertips. Coming back into some movement as we wake back up through the physical body start to make our way to an upright seated position. Feel free to take a fetal position along the way. Being gentle with yourself. As we just meet together to briefly close our practice out. We're going to close our eyes, sit up tall one more time here. As you find that rhythm of the breath, notice that the breath comes a little easier. Hopefully we feel a little bit less tension. Remembering that it's a practice. The more we practice self-care relaxation, the easier it becomes to get to this space. Taking the hands to the heart, opening our eyes. I just thank you all so much for joining me. My prayer is that you feel a little more relaxed, a little more restored as you go back out into your day. Just a reminder that we've got total body strength beginner edition tomorrow so maybe that's something you'd like to try so as always i'll just leave you with peace be with